There are just some things that fill me with indescribable joy. Certain things that evoke both emotion and happiness from within me. We all have particular things like that that will forever hold in high regard. Things we will cherish forever. Superhero cartoons can be really hit or miss. You either get ones that are really friggin' fantastic, really friggin' weird, or the Superhero Squad show. Now, DC, say what you want about their movies, have a pretty solid legacy of cartoons for their characters. My favourite of the bunch, and clearly the favourite of many, many others, is 2003's Teen Titans, a show that absolutely none of us deserved, and yet so goddamn glad we got. Being entirely different to anything DC had put out beforehand, naturally the show was met with immediate acclaim from everyone, yep. Every, everyone just loved it. Now recognized as one of the greatest action and superhero cartoons, Teen Titans was a childhood favorite of many and definitely, definitely holds up even to this day. So today, we're taking a little look back on it. Man, it's been a while. Welcome back to Cherish Forever, the series where I talk about things that I really, really like, which is apparently a series that you guys really, really like. Please leave me alone. The original Teen Titans is one of my favorite cartoons of all time, even as someone who couldn't care less about the comics or even most of the DC universe. I didn't get the privilege of growing up with this show, Cable was expensive, okay? But I did get to watch it, what, a couple years ago now? And I loved every second of it. For those who don't know about the series, what are you doing with your life? It's about a team of teenage superheroes who fight crime and do other shit that teenagers do. Like fight, and be miserable, and feel shitty about themselves. This team is led by Robin. Yes, that Robin. With four other losers that no one cares about. Starfire, an alien who can go pew pew with her eyes. Cyborg. Booyah! Raven, every cartoon fan's wet dream, and Beast Boy, every cartoon fan's maturity level. I love this show to death, and even after all this time, it's still recognized as a beloved cartoon that was impressive for the time. So with that, let's go! <laughs> we're... We're gonna try and go through the whole video without mentioning Teen Titans Go, okay? Not, not gonna spend the whole video talking about how much better the original is, not gonna be making any easy jokes, not gonna be ranting, just... No, you could do this. <sighs> okay. One thing that's so interesting to me about the show is that it managed to be set in the DC universe without even so much as mentioning any of the big name superheroes, even Batman. Fuck Batman. See Venom? Teen Titans did it first, yeah. Although it really does raise the question of where the hell was the Justice League when the Earth was being attacked by literal demons from hell. Nah, that's cool Batman, you take a day off, the kids will handle it. Titans has a very anime feel, with the show including a lot of exaggerated and cartoonish elements, which though sometimes could get a little excessive, was mostly pretty cute and funny. This was where most of the initial criticism was drawn from though. But once people realized, hey, this show is actually pretty good. Most people seem to agree that the show perfectly blended these little silly comedic moments with the grimmer and darker storylines. And yes, some of the episodes are just outright stupid. What? But even the silly, nonsensical episodes were super enjoyable. Like any good action cartoon, the show varied wildly between more serious action-oriented episodes and episodes where I'm convinced the writers just made up shit as they went along. You had a tournament episode, a racing episode, one where Robin is forced to take a girl to prom and the villain of the episode was a guy with a spider for a head, yes really. One minute it could be super light-hearted, and the next it'd be super depressing and make you reconsider what you've even been doing with your life. One cool little tidbit that I felt was worth mentioning is that the intro theme switched between the English and Japanese versions to indicate whether it was a serious or silly episode. So hey, that's pretty cool. So you knew if an episode started and the song was in English, <laughs> you were in for a ride. You go from an episode where the titans get turned into animals and Raven is a bunny and it's so cute, and then there's an episode where the titans are relentlessly chased by the manifestation of Raven's nightmares as it slowly devours them all. In an episode literally titled Fear Itself. Yep, I'm certainly feeling the fear right now. The multi-part episodes were where shit got real. There was the Trigon arc, where Raven's dad uses her as a portal to literally bring about the apocalypse. Aftershock, the two-parter where Terra betrays the Titans for Slade and beats the living shit out of them. And even two episodes where we follow a completely different team of Teen Titans. Few shows could pull off tense cliffhangers that made you scream at the TV wanting more, quite like Teen Titans could. The action in Teen Titans is freaking awesome, easily one of my favorite parts about it, with each episode including really creative use of the team's powers and Robin's... robin -y. Despite its art style making it seem like it's more for kids, the fights in this show were brutal and really kept you on the edge of your seat. Especially the Slade and Robin ones. 
God, I kind of feel sorry for him. One thing I really admire about Titans is its creativity. Much like shows like Ben 10, which I also love to death, there never cease to be interesting foes and obstacles for the Titans to have to overcome. And no matter how completely stupid the idea was, it all seemed to fit into this very strange little universe. The Titans fight an incredibly diverse amount of villains, with a rogues gallery to challenge the likes of the best rogues galleries, even Batman himself. A ruthless demon overlord who happens to be Raven's father? Sure. An average Reddit user? Okay. Ice King? What? And that freaking spider thing, what even was that? Perhaps the strongest point of Team Titans is its main cast. All five Titans, lovable in their own way, received an insane amount of development throughout the show's length, each with their own arc attributed to the show's five seasons. Except you, Starfire. That's what you get for being too pure for this world. The show made sure that everyone had a time to shine and made it so that this team of teen superheroes was not only lovable, but also characters that we could relate to and write terrible fanfictions about. Robin, the leader of the team and my favorite character, oh my god, is a character with what I would call layers. This, this thing called character development and complexity seems to be missing from a lot of cartoons these days. Okay, I'll start with the cheap shots. Who oh, do back in my day, I watched Rick and Morty. His relationship with the series' main villain, Slade, was written incredibly well. One episode of the show called Haunted sees Robin, well, haunted by the ghost of Slade following his, uh, exit from the series, and it's a very serious and dark episode that shows the depths of Robin's fears and weaknesses. It's genuinely scary seeing how raw Robin's fear was as he lashed out at his friends in an attempt to hunt down nothing but a ghost. For a show people originally worried was too kiddy, which it could be, don't get me wrong, Titans really knew when to kick things up a notch. That's one of the things I really admired about Teen Titans. It didn't shy away from these more complex topics that affected even boring people like us, as well as laser shooting space aliens. Topics like insecurities, puberty, even racism and discrimination. All handled wonderfully without being shoved down our throats and all for some reason aimed at Starfire. Oh my god, leave the poor girl alone. Speaking of, Starfire, aka Best Girl, is a Tamaranian and a lot of her character is centered around the fact that Earth culture is very confusing to her and it is adorable. Reflected in her odd speech patterns and even in some of her defining character moments, Starfire really brings home the show's overall theme of family, considering the whole team is a group of weirdos, basically. Beast Boy serves as the team's comic relief and is one of those characters that you go from laughing with to laughing at to wanting to strangle him until he shuts the fuck. Just kidding, love you, Garfield. Cyborg is the wisecracking, villain slapping, dick clapping badass, part human and part robot, hence the name, and I'd say he has some of the most interesting solo episodes in the series, with some arcs even dedicated to him acting as a team leader. And then there's Raven. <laughs> Raven is what I would say is the most complicated character on the show, because while the others have pretty sad backstories and ordeals they have to overcome, Raven's dad is Satan and her powers nearly kill people on a regular basis. <laughs> All five have super interesting powers. Beast Boy could morph into any animal of his choosing. Raven has mystical demon powers. Cyborg is a friggin' robot, man. As mentioned, Starfire has her pew pew powers and is super strong. And Robin is Robin. You really got time to feel for each character, and we had plenty of time spent exploring some of their greatest triumphs, well this is just disturbing, but also some of their lowest moments. Even characters like Beast Boy, who were initially just an excuse to make fart jokes, became someone you could really empathize with and care about. This show, it, it does things to your feelings, man. As mentioned, the series has a range of really good villains, like the previously mentioned Slade, who I still consider to be one of the most genuinely threatening and terrifying villains I've ever seen, and The Hive, the Titans' evil counterparts filled with equally weird and hot characters. There's also Terra, the sixth Titan, who appeared sporadically throughout the series as a goddamn traitor! She had the power to manipulate Rock and also constantly break Beast Boy's heart. What I think made Teen Titans so special was the emotion behind these characters. These betrayals and battles and victories became so much more heartfelt because you really came to care about the cast. And that's what made it all the more heart-wrenching when it was time to say goodbye. Now, I've talked about this before, but Teen Titans has a very interesting ending. After 64 episodes of build-up, this episode has barely anything to do with the rest of the series, instead focusing on Terra's sudden reappearance. Because she's, you know, supposed to be dead, Beast Boy spends the entire episode trying to work out what the hell is going on, only to be treated as if she doesn't even know who he is. Yep, 
Been there, buddy. Meanwhile, the other Titans spend the entire episode battling some white monster thing. A creature so vague, it's literally called the white monster on the Teen Titans wiki. Wow, thanks, guys. The whole episode is really ambiguous and doesn't really explain what's going on, with a lot of it left up to the viewer's own interpretation. And I think that's what makes it so intriguing to me. That, and there's no happy ending. Oh yeah, Terra doesn't end up remembering Beast Boy. She just tells him that things change. Hey! And to move on. And the whole thing ends with Beast Boy running into a white light. We don't even find out what happened to this thing. I remember watching this episode for the first time and thinking, What? What is this, friggin' even Galleon? To be blunt, I watched this episode when I was going through a very similar situation to what Beast Boy was in the episode, minus the whole friends battling whatever the fuck. And I can't say it was the most comforting feeling to have the entire thing end with a get over it, loser. It left me with a very hollow feeling. After a series that brought me so many laughs and tears and smiles, for it to end like this? Things Change is a very depressing episode, not only for its content, but also for its meaning. You can scour the internet all you want for the proper meaning of it all, but it's right there in the title. This was the show telling us to let go. And as I said, even as someone who didn't grow up with the series, even I wasn't ready to do that. Of course, there was the movie released after the series finale, Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo, which was supposed to give us a proper ending to the series. I love this film, not only for being a movie-length episode of Teen Titans, but also because it finally gave us that goddamn kiss! Why did it take 65 episodes?! Why was it cancelled? Well, that's been up for debate for ages. Cartoon Network just tends to have a knack for getting rid of anything of actual quality. As sad as I am to know that Teen Titans was canned prematurely, I wouldn't say that it was cancelled too soon. <coughs> we got five seasons of 65 episodes, plus a movie, and I'd say that's plenty of Teen Titans action to go around, so at least there's that. Unlike some other series. So, now that it turns out Cartoon Network does in fact have ears and have been listening to the anguished cries of the Teen Titans fanbase, it seems we've been teased with a potential revival for the show. Even if it unfortunately involves... them. Ah! I'd like to keep these guys as far away from those degenerates as possible, please. I would be ecstatic to see another season of Teen Titans, even though I've moved on at this point. I've moved on to better things, it's over! But I think it would have to be done in a very specific way, like, say, Samurai Jack. A more serious, short-lived adventure to give the series the proper conclusion it deserves, instead of aborting it, and then using its mangled corpse as a money printing factory. I'd be up for more classic Titans goodness, but considering that we've got the new live-action Titans show... Fuck that man. Which is apparently good, what? As well as the DC animated movies that brought the whole team back together, I'd say Teen Titans is now long gone. I'd rather see it evolve like this rather than disturb it from its slumber to desecrate it with arse jokes. Plus, we got Young Justice, which isn't exactly Teen Titans, but hey, I'll take it. Needless to say, whether we get more or not, Teen Titans is something that I will cherish for- FUCK THIS I FUCKING GARBAGE out, PIECE OF SHIT SHOW! Out. It's not even that bad, it's just- You cancelled this? For this? This? <sighs> that feels better. <clears throat> Thanks for watching.